This is Phil Everhart, and I'm standing on the south rim of the Grand Canyon in Grand Canyon National Park. You have to see it to believe it. A great many people have tried to describe the beauty and the size of the Grand Canyon. Artists, writers, poets, but I'm afraid no one has succeeded. The dimensions are too great. There just isn't anything to use for comparison. The Grand Canyon has many moods, many faces. You get a strikingly different view from every point along the rim because you can't begin to see it all from any one point. Every hour of the day, the scene changes. And if you are lucky enough to see a summer thunderstorm in Grand Canyon, you will never forget the sight. Have you ever wondered what great power it was that formed the Grand Canyon? There's one person who has asked that question almost every day. Dave Beal, Chief Park Naturalist at Grand Canyon National Park. Dave? Just how big is the Grand Canyon, anyway? Well, Bill, the canyon winds across this Kaibab Plateau for 217 miles. It varies in width from one rim to the other from four to as much as 14 miles, and it averages one mile in depth. How could we go about finding out just what it was that formed the Grand Canyon? Well, I could explain it to you from up here, but I think perhaps the best thing to do would be for us to take a trip down into the canyon itself. Are you game for a ride on one of these Grand Canyon mules? Well, looking at the face of the canyon, I'd say that it would take a sure-footed mule to go down into the canyon. Well, the trails are very good and well-maintained, but uh, a mule comes in very handy. Okay, let's go. At the mule corral, we saw a colorful scene Before we mounted, I had a chance to talk with Howard Peelman, the wrangler, who would be with our party. Well, how about mules on this trail we're going down? They're better than horses? Yes, they are considered better than horses for this particular job. Uh, they are more sure-footed and reliable. Uh, you, know, they, you don't panic quite so easily as a horse's will. Sometimes they're a little temperamental, we say, like the women. <laughs> well, have you ever lost a customer going down the trail? No, we never have lost a customer. We're always kidding them about it. They, yeah, that they only go off once. <laughs> I guess they do. <laughs> well, you think we'll make it all right today, then? I think we'll make it real well today. Dave Beal and I mounted our mules, and soon our party was headed down the Bright Angel Trail. Ten rugged miles of trail lay ahead before we would reach the bottom of the mile deep canyon. One false step could bring disaster. The steepest parts of the canyon wall are traversed by switchbacks. And as our mules slowly made the turns, we could look straight down for a thousand feet. As we descended, the temperature steadily climbed. It was about 105 degrees now, and we were all feeling the effects of the heat. Dave explained an amazing situation which is experienced in the trip from the north rim to the bottom of the canyon. We were seeing the same change in plants and animals, and in climate as well, which we would see in a trip from Canada to the United States and into Mexico. When we reached the bottom of the canyon, the temperature would be similar to that of a Mexican desert about 115 degrees. Our first rest stop was at Indian Gardens, where the Havasupai Indians once cultivated their little farms. After several hours on the hot, dusty trail, we found the cool, tree-shaded oasis an excellent spot for resting our aching muscles while eating lunch. The rim of the canyon seemed far off, but we still had a long way down to go. We found an entirely different world when we reached the Tonto Plateau. The thick forest of the rim had completely disappeared, and we were now in a desert country. Once, the trail leveled off, 
and for a moment we thought we had reached the bottom, only to find another switch back and another tremendous drop to wind our way down. It was a spectacular journey to the bottom, made more so by the enormous formations that towered like temples around us. Dave pointed out to me gigantic rocks balanced on an outcropping of the canyon wall, ready to plunge downward. Tiny plants called lichens grow on the rocks, forming acids which eat holes into the rock. Wind, rain, and snow fill the hole with water and dirt, and in winter, ice forms exerting its enormous power to crack the rocks. Trees then grow in the cracks and the growing roots split off the rock, which eventually rolls down the canyon wall, and the Grand Canyon is a little bit wider. At times it seemed we would never reach our objective, but suddenly we turned and saw it. There below us was the bottom of the canyon with the great Colorado River marking Journey's End. We weaved our way down along the high cliffs overlooking the river, and a short time later, we reached the edge of the river itself. At long last, we have reached the bottom of the Grand Canyon, and I am standing now on the bank of the Colorado River. It was 10 long, hot miles down to the bottom of the canyon by Bright Angel Trail and nearly a mile straight down. Here we find the answer to the question, how was the Grand Canyon formed? The Grand Canyon is known as the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River because it is the river which is most responsible for the carving of the canyon. On our trip down, we saw the forces of erosion which have helped cut away the walls of the canyon, bringing the debris down to the river to be carried away. The river does its work in two ways. It carries away all of the rock and the earth which is brought down to the river by the forces of erosion. Otherwise, this great canyon would fill in. And as it carries away the debris, the river uses the rock and sand as cutting tools to grind away at the river bottom. Every day, the river carries along a half million tons of silt by this point. And every day it will roll along the bottom of the river a half million tons of these great boulders. This process never ceases. It has been going on every second, every hour, every day, every year for millions of years. This is the secret of the formation of the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River the forces of nature, the power of a mighty river, and an eternity of time.